There we go. It always takes a little while to draw all of that and I'm not even doing a great job to be honest, but that's the way it is. Hey everyone, this is Attack Awesome. Today I'm bringing the Roll and White Quiltable Paper Quilts. This is a game that is currently being funded on Kickstarter and I wasn't able to um, record a video in time before the campaign, but I'm recording one now um, while it is active. So as usual, I will put a link to the campaign in the description of this video. What I have planned for today, today I will bring you a solo playthrough of the game, right? Um, because there also is a solo mode that is quite interesting. And then I will give you like just a few thoughts from my side, like what I think about it. All we need for a game is the game sheet, which we have right here then also a pen and two dice. That is all we need. All right, and for setup, um, another thing is we see like these uh, patterns here, right? These are like the colorful ones. And here we have like um, the ones that like line drawings, so to speak. And now I need to just um, write them and like, like draw them in here. So I have like a drawing that I will use for drawing them, right? So let me just quickly do that. So this is not very nice, but it's okay, I suppose. <laughs> um, these um, shapes have to be like as simple as possible so I can like draw them in here. And I have made them a little bit less simple than I wanted to, but I think that's fine. All right, so um, in a solo game, um, you also need to choose the difficulty. There are three difficulties. Um, we have like the easiest difficulty, which is Samantha. Then we have Timothy and Gladys. Like these are like uh, the difficulties in ascending order. Let's play against the quilting master, Samantha. They're all called quilting masters. Um, because Samantha um, always lets me go first and then they choose one pattern. Timothy would then, um, Timothy would be the one who would go first and choose one pattern. And Gladys is even worse because um, would let me go first, but choose two patterns. I will tell you later how that works. So let's play against Samantha. That means Samantha claims always one pattern if available and lets me go first. Let me just um, jump into the game and tell you how this game works. So at the beginning of the uh, at, of the round, we always like roll these two dice. And with these two dice, I can do one of three things. Either I use two dice and claim a pattern. You see like all these different patterns here. So we have like twice like this, uh, these corn cubs um, right next to each other. Here we have like the pie and the corn cub. Here we have ABC, ABBC. These are like specific like patterns, right? And what I'm doing during the game is like putting patterns, like putting these, uh, putting these symbols here um, in the pattern area. And then later on, I take them from the pattern area and put them on the quilt, right? And then at the end, when the game is over, uh, I'll tell you later how that works, when that is the case. Um, and then um, we will take a look at all the patterns that I have purchased for myself, that I have gotten, and I would like apply them to the entire quilt and see like how many points I get, right? That's like uh, what I can do. The second thing, I, I need two dice for that, right? Because I always choose like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I also choose like one, two, three, four, five, six, like here, right? So one, one would be one, one would be that pattern right here. The second thing I can do is um, I can transfer symbols from up here down to the pattern area. For example, two ones would be twice that pumpkin kind of thing, right? So I could like put that pretty much like anywhere I want to. And the third thing I can do is um, I can use a one, and that means that I can tr transfer one of the symbols that I put in the pattern area onto my quilt. Um, if I like have like a five, for example, I need to transfer five of them, um, but I cannot like change any of their um, any of their positions. The only thing I can do is rotate the shape. That is all I can do. Right. Um, so and then I have to cross them out here. That means that uh, I can only transfer them once. That's why this uh, piece is also larger. Right. So I have more options of putting stuff there. At the end of the game, I will then check this pattern against my quilt. That is what is happening. I can also use dice for these special abilities. I will talk about those a little bit later. All right. So I have two ones. One thing I can do is either claim that pattern here. That pattern is like two corn curbs. Wouldn't be too bad. Um, with like two of these uh, corn, I can like uh, do like really easy patterns if I have like enough force later on. I would have to see about that. Um, but I think I would actually do that. I would actually claim this pattern here, right? And what I will do is I will put ST right here so I know that I have claimed it and not the um, the quilting master. That was already my turn. I used these two dice. I claimed, I claimed a pattern. That's it. Now it's the quilting master's turn. The quilting master will now, um, in Samantha's case, Samantha will now 
take these two dice and claim a paladin if available. The only paladin that is available is 1-1, one, one, that one up there, but I already claimed it. So Samantha will not claim anything. All right, next turn. Uh, one and six. So either I can claim this pattern down here, that is like corn, flower, flower, corn, or six, one, which would be a corn and flower. That's not too bad, right? Because I could like combine these uh, maybe with the corn I put here. Um, that's actually not too bad. You know what? I will also claim this pattern here. Um, let me start with a few patterns at the beginning like this. Now Samantha's turn. Samantha will claim a pattern. 6-1 is already gone, but 1-6 is still there. So let me put an X in here and put a QM here for Quilting Master so we know that they have claimed this. Okay. Um, and now it's my turn to roll the dice again. 3-5. Three, 3-5 five. Three, five would be the pattern ABBA or 5-3, five, three, just AB. AB would be perfect with that pattern here, right? Because AB means something and something else right next to it. And um, that is corn and the flower, right? So I would like get even more points there. So you know what? I will also claim this pattern, but I will like now have to start actually putting stuff here. Otherwise I will have a little issue. Okay. And Samantha cannot claim five, three, but she can claim three, five. QM and that is me, I always forget that. All right, one six. One six is now something um, that I cannot use because six one I claimed and one six Samantha claimed. So I have to like, do something here. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, this, uh, the pumpkins, um, that is something that I need, right? Oh no, I need, I need corn actually. Corn and flowers maybe. So this all doesn't really help me. Um, but I can still, I think I will still take one and six, these two. Um, let me put this one right here, maybe, uh, like this. And then I will put this one right next to it because that would be an AB pattern, right? I could transfer that onto here, onto the quilt later on, like this. All right, and now Samantha would claim something, but there's nothing left, so that's that. Three, three is this pattern here, would be two pumpkins. Um, I don't want to claim that. I don't think so. Um, because I do need flowers for some of my patterns here, right? So what I will do, I will actually use these two threes and put two flowers on here. Um, let me think how to best do it. I need like corn right next to each other and the flowers next to that. So let me put like um, a flower here, like this. I mean, my, <laughs> my drawing doesn't look like a flower, but uh, that's how it is. And I will also put another one right here like this okay that did not work well that doesn't look good i completely messed that up can i still save it i don't think so Nah, not really but that's how it is okay um and then samantha will claim the three three over here okay and everything samantha claims is first of all locked for me right i can't use it anymore and points for her at the end of the game all right so i definitely need some what am i working with oh, i need force Ah, three and two, that's not too great. Is that a pattern I can work with? Two, three would be like four pies. That doesn't work with what I'm collecting here. And three, two would be a pie and a pumpkin. That doesn't really help me. So um, I will have to like take these over here. Actually, what I could do is the following. Uh, I will use the three to put another flower right here, although it doesn't look like a flower, <laughs> what I'm doing here, right? like this and the two i will use to transfer these two so i will cross them out over here onto my quilt and i'll put them in the same position actually all right so like this and another one right here like this okay there we go okay and samantha will claim two three or three two uh, let her claim two, three with the pies. I don't really want that. Although it's like a lot of points, but ah, yeah, I should have given her that, but that's too late now. So um, these were the few first returns. We will continue playing, but let me just add a new, few new rules that you don't know yet. 
First of all, we have like these abilities here. I will not cover them in detail now. You can find them in the rulebook. I will cover them whenever they become available to me, right? When I actually want to use them. But these are like free powers and these require one die I have to spend and I can use them once a game. As soon as like that respective column or row is filled. So let's say I have filled this entire column, then I can use that special power during my turn. Then I cross it out because I can only use it once per game. And there are things like um, I can like have a higher score for one of my patterns. Um, I can put a wild in here that counts for everything, like put it in there and then transfer it over here. I can just fill um, just fill something in here. So I'm like done faster with the quilt because the game ends in one of two ways in a multiplayer game, um, which is if anybody has filled the pattern area or the quilt, then the game ends and then everybody else gets one last turn except the person who has ended the game. And then a solo game, the game can also end by the quilting master and um, filling one of these um, categories here, right? So filling all under, uh, filling like two categories. Uh, for example, everything under one and three, for example, right? And then whenever um, that is done, then we count up all our points. There are a few bonus points that I can get for like triggering the end I get points, for completing my quilt I can get points, and also for having the quilt symmetrical. Um, and then we will get point. I will get points for all the patterns. I will apply them to the quilt, and Samantha will get like um, the points for the patterns here just once, right? So for example, here would be six points, six points, three, five, and so on. So that's like the last few rules you don't know yet. And let me continue here. All right, five and six. Ah, oh, both stuff that I really don't need. Do we have a pattern we can use? Six, five would be um, sunflower and the other two flowers. Mm. And five, six would be one flower and one sunflower. I think that would be okay. I can kind of work with that. So I would actually claim this one here. And Samantha will claim this one here. All right. The issue is that Samantha always gets points for every pattern uh, she claims. I only get points if I actually um, am able to like work them into my quilt. 4-4, four, four. that is good. That is the corn that I really desperately need. So I will definitely use both of them. I will put them both here, right next to each other, right? Uh, let me do it like this. Now it looks like a, how do you call it? A corn dog, I think, right? This and like this. There we go. And Samantha will claim the 4-4 four, four if it's still available. It is. Okay, and that's how the game continues. Another four, that's good. Oops, that was a four. Um, and also a sunflower. Um, the sunflower I could also combine with the regular flowers. That is something I can work with. So uh, let me put like the corn right here. And I will like also put a sunflower down. Uh, let me put the sunflower down. Hmm. Let me put it right here, like this. There we go. Okay, and Samantha will claim the 2-4 or the 4-2. I will give her the 2-4, that is less points. And also she's like, uh, she just still needs a while to fill up this area here. Okay, another 4 would have been great. 5 and 1. The 1 is fine, but I can, I can put the pumpkin right here because I have an idea of what I want to do. So I will put the pumpkin right here with the one, right? Right there. And with the five, I will transfer one, two, three, four, five. These five, I will transfer all down there. Let me do it like this so you can see it better, which ones I have transferred already. It doesn't look very nice, but that's the way it is, I suppose. <laughs> So let me put the corn here, corn here, corn here, like this. Mm, there we go. It always takes a little while to draw all of that. And I'm not even doing a great job, to be honest, but that's the way it is. Then I put the flower, <laughs> which I wouldn't really call that, right here. Looks like a crown or like a trident, maybe. I don't know. And then also like the pumpkin down here. Okay. And Samantha will claim 1-5 or 5-1. One. 1-5 one gives less points. So let's give that to 
Samantha. Okay, so and you see here, now I can also spend a die in one round to use this one here. And that one should actually be cool because this power here lets me take one of my patterns and just increase the point value of it. I don't know yet which one I will increase, so I will still wait for that a little bit. Three and five, the pie doesn't help me at all. The three, but the flower would be okay. I could work with the flower. So let me put a flower where? Let me put a flower here like this. And you know what? I will actually use the five immediately to uh, use this power here. Um, and then let me see which pattern I wanna, I, did, I didn't have it like an AA pattern. I didn't have that, right? Like I had two corns, so I would probably get a corn at some point. That would be, I could do that twice. AB is like something I can do like quite often, I think. So I think I will increase the AB from one point to two points. That's not too bad. So now we'll get two points for each of these patterns. Um, so I can use like one of my symbols on my quilt for several patterns, but I cannot use this uh, one symbol like several times for the same pattern. So if I had like another corn here, I could do corn, 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 but I cannot then also do it like this, these two corn and these two, right? Because I've already counted them for that specific pattern. Okay, three and five. Um, Samantha cannot take this one and not this one either. So Samantha doesn't get anything, that's good. Two, four. Four is good, I need that. And also that is fine. So let me put the corn right here and the sunflower right here, like this. Okay, good. Um, and Samantha cannot claim this one, but it, but she can claim this one here. I need to like finish up the game quite soon because she's like getting a lot of points here. That is quite dangerous. Three and six. Six doesn't help me at all. Three is fine. Okay, let me put the flower right here like this with the uh that is the three and with the six uh, i cannot really do anything with the six but i have to do something right yeah then i will just have to transfer this one down there let me just put it like in the way in the corner where it doesn't like uh like disturb me at all like this um samantha can claim three six and also six three which will give less points good all right, so I will need I will have to transfer a few things over. So let's see. Um, let me just transfer these two. Right, maybe three six. Can I get anything here? Nothing too special. So let me just transfer these two over here. Let me put the six right here, like this, and the three over here, like that for now. And Samantha can get six points here. Yeah, that's what she will do. Oh man, she's getting way too many points. I think this is a very bad game. Four, okay, I do like maybe a four. That could be not too bad. So um, how can I best do that? Let me put like the corn right here. Uh, that's the four and with the six. I can't really do anything like all too spectacular. Not really. Mm. So let me just transfer another one of these over here for now. And then next round, I, I like always have like these high numbers. I need like small numbers, like twos and ones. So I can actually transfer some stuff over here. And that's something that I really can't do at the moment. And Samantha, I will let her claim this one here. Okay, well. Yeah, okay, one. That's finally something I can work with. Um, so, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That is something that I could do. You know what? Let me use the five to transfer a few things here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll rotate all of that so I can fit it in here. So let me put the pumpkin here. Let me put that one right here. Then I have like another flower that doesn't look like a flower. Um, uh, then I have the sunflower right here. Uh, 
And I have another regular flower right there. And then I will use the one to also transfer one corn over here. Like this. All right, and Samantha cannot claim this one, but she can claim this one here. Okay, so three more to fill, and then I can end the game. Um, I do have, I raised like A, B here, so it doesn't really matter what I put here, to be honest. Just pretty much anything. Um, so let's see, one and four. Another corn, that is very good. So let me put a corn, oh no, over there. Uh, let me put a corn over here. Like that. And then uh, with the one, I will just put another uh, another one of these pumpkin things over here, like this. And Samantha can claim that for four points or for two points. Yeah, two points. That sounds good. So and now I need a three. I do have a three, but we can also like do a few things here, right? Um, I do have, like with this one, I can like put um, like a pattern twice over here, but I don't really want that. And um, this one is interesting. I can claim another pattern for free. So I will use that die to claim a pattern for free. Let me find like one that really fits my stuff here. Maybe I can find one here. Mm, I think AA wouldn't be too bad. I think I can actually work with AA quite well. So I will use that. So this one is gone. And then I will use the three to transfer these three on onto my quilt. Um, and I will keep them like in this orientation. That is all fine. Like this. Okay, and then also like that pumpkin thingy here. Okay, and then Samantha, yeah, she cannot claim that the three six and the six three are both not claimable. So that is it. And that was like the end of the game because I have now finished the quilt. Samantha's turn was one more time, but uh, she couldn't do anything. All right, so, and now I did I did trigger the end. So I receive uh, five points. I did complete my quilt. So I receive another five points. If I had like a symmetrical quilt like that or like this or that or that, if I could like, if it like were, were, were symmetrical, then I would get another 10 points, but that's not the case, right? So I don't get that. So, and now uh, I have, <laughs> have to like count up all the points here. Um, let's start with Samantha first. That's pretty easy actually. So we just count up all the points besides the patterns. So she gets five, 11, 17, 20, 23, 28. That is then 34, 36, 42, 45. Oops, um, 45, 49, that's 55, 60, 64. That is a lot. So she has 64 points. Let's see. Oh, you can see it down here. Let's see how many I have. So um, now I will go like through all the patterns. So like the, the corn, uh, like two corns right next to each other, give me three points. So that's three, six, nine points. So I have already, I've already nine points. Let me just put my points right here. Uh, let me just put the points right here, so nine. Then the next one I have is here, AA, that is like two of the same right next to each other. And for each of them, I get two points. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. That would be 10 points. Okay, that is okay. And then the next pattern is here, A, B, like one and something else beside it, something different. Um, and I get, for A, B, I get two points each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was able to like max that out. So that is 16 points, good. Then here I receive uh, two points for a flower right next to a sunflower. I only have that once. That is two points. And then a corn right next to a regular flower. That is one, two, three, four times two. That's eight. And that is all. All right. So that's nine, 19, 
29.35.43.45 plus 10. That is 55. So I barely did not make that. Uh, last time I played against Samantha, I won by a large margin, actually. But I finished the game much earlier, and I was much luckier with the dice rolls. Um, and this time I was quite unlucky. Well, that's how you play the game. That concludes my showcase of quiltable paper quilts. Now let's dive into my preview of the game. The theme is delightful. Uh, I have a personal affinity for all things quilts and patches, much like my enjoyment of games such as Patchwork and Calico, both games that I really, really enjoy. The gameplay is refreshingly unique, although it may require some time to grasp the rules. Once understood, it is not overly difficult, but the game demands considerable thought. With numerous patterns that can be rotated and mirrored, spatial awareness is essential. Players prone to analysis paralysis may find the strategic depth quite challenging, to be honest. One aspect I did particularly appreciate is the simultaneous actions. All players engage simultaneously in a multiplayer game, which significantly reduces downtime. This feature greatly enhances the gameplay experience, in my opinion. The solo mode is well designed, with an emphasis on pursuing patterns early in the game, as they may become in inaccessible later on. The AI opponent's difficulty scale effectively as well, ensuring an engaging solo mode. But luck does play a significant role in the game, which is worth noting for those who prefer less luck-based mechanisms. As you could see, in this game I was quite unlucky, in another game I was luckier, and these two games went like way differently in terms of me losing or winning. However, in this case, it also adds a tactical element, balancing the strategic depth in my opinion. In summary, Quiltable Paper Quilts offers a uniquely engaging role and write experience with a charming theme. While it may be quite strategic and potentially challenging for some players, its combination of two different spatial puzzles essentially sets it apart. If you enjoyed today's showcase and do appreciate a roll and write with a bit more depth, I recommend checking out the active campaign. As always, you'll find a link in the video description. Well, that concludes my review of Quiltable Paper Quilts. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I'm immensely grateful for your support. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, with a special shout out to Thakon and Ryan Hall for their generous contributions at the highest tier. Your support means so much to me. If you enjoy my content, you can support me by watching, liking and commenting on my videos, subscribing to my channel, supporting me on Patreon and joining my Discord server to engage with me and my amazing community. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the very next video or on my Discord server. Take care everyone, stay safe and cheers.